Okay, welcome back. So, to, just to recap, we touched on a bit on the on the business responses, right? the mitigations that responds to the risk assessment. Right? So we now move to the next phase where you are now already in the crisis. Remember, we spoke of the before, right? Business continuity plan. Then we speak of the jury when you're now in a crisis, right? And then we'll then touch base on the recovery. So with regards to the crisis, right? When you're already in the crisis, you, you must have a crisis management framework, right? So what is this framework? So this is what we would have identif ideally needed um, during, excuse me, during COVID, when we were already now in the midst of the crisis, we would then have needed a framework to be able to withstand you know, the, 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 the shocks that the organization was facing during the crisis, right? So what is an organizational crisis, right? It's a low probability, high impact event that threatens the viability of the organization. Right? Low probability, meaning something that we thought would never happen. High impact. When it happens, it's significant. Classic example, COVID pandemic. No one would have ever thought it would happen. And when it did happen, it had a serious impact. And it threatened the viability of most organizations. Right? And it's characterized by ambiguity, of course. No one really knows what was happening, what caused it exactly, and the effect and means of resolution. So when it just started, no one knew how it was going to be resolved. There were no vaccines, right? So once that happened, we were definitely in organizational crisis. Right? Okay, right. So a low probability crisis event, we've highlighted that. And what we're saying is this characteristic make planning for a crisis even more troublesome because you would ask yourself, why plan for something bad if it may not occur? But it did okay. Now we know low probability events do happen, right? Crisis can have a high damage impact, right? A lot of businesses did not survive COVID. Right, high impact, right? We spoke of ambiguity. So what is crisis management? Right? It, is the, it is the process of preparing for managing and limiting, limiting damage from unexpected events. So once you're already in the crisis, we needed to just limit the damage because it, it's already upon us. So that's why going forward, we still need to have crisis management because who is to say there won't be another low probability, high impact? So we need to be ready. We must have a plan in place to say, should it happen? Right? Because it's low probability, it's probably not covered maybe by our business continuity plan. Or it could be covered. But we're saying if it's not and it does manifest, how do we navigate that crisis? Right? So it's the process of preparing for managing and limiting damage from unexpected events. You need to anticipate the threats and develop strategies similar to business continuity. But now these strategies will now speak of if it actually manifests and you, your, your preventative or controls before it happens haven't really helped because it wasn't something you thought would happen. When it does happen, how do you then come up or what is the strategy you use to come up with mitigations? Right. So there is some overlap with risk management. Remember, you're still talking about risks. You're still talking about what could go wrong. But as I've said, risk management focuses on how to prevent the crisis, right? the before. Whilst crisis management is the during, how do I react? So that's the two different things. Okay. So there is some frameworks that talk to crisis management, right? Uh, 
um, you know, scholars have come up with different frameworks that say this is how you manage crisis. But in general, right, they all assist individuals to organize, guide, and prompt action. Because remember, you may even, because you're in a crisis, you know, much as it seems obvious, you need to be guided to prompt action. Because I'm, you may end up just not doing anything, sitting and saying we're in a crisis. But the crisis management will prompt you to do something and to guide you. What are the key aspects that the, this framework must cover? It must have three areas, right? You must first accept responsibility and work to address the problem. You must first acknowledge that there is a problem. Don't acknowledge the there's a problem. What are the chances that you come up with mitigations, right? So, firstly, it 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 it, it directs you or prompts you to accept responsibility. So, someone must accept responsibility for taking action, right? You must first identify that there is a crisis. Do not de deny, because when you sit in denial, it may be too late to react, right? It prompts you to communicate quickly and effectively to stakeholders. Remember value chain, ensuring you've communicated. Because remember, the crisis can just be in your own company. It doesn't have to be a crisis that's affecting everyone. Right? Always think about that. Because we, we may think a crisis, oh, everyone's affected. No, it could just be affecting your own company. So you need to be able to communicate quickly so that other people can be better prepared or anticipate how your crisis or that crisis can also affect them, right? And then you need to take advantage to learn from that crisis, right? First mover advantage. So now that you've identified there's a crisis, you must learn from that crisis so that you are able to respond. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I just take during COVID, people realize, look, we can't, we can't now move People quickly learned online, for example. Schools quickly went online. So you need to be able to, to learn quickly. Right? You need to understand what could go wrong and how to prevent it or how to counter it as it happens. So those are the key things that the framework prompts you. Right? So in your own organization, as you are determining your own crisis, plan. It could be as simple as just highlighting steps under these three aspects. To say who must take responsibility of what. And then the learnings. Are you going to have meetings? Who must sit in those meetings? What is the things that you're likely to consider? Okay, so let's think about that. So that's crisis management. What are the essential rules of the crisis management? Prepare and make crisis readiness an ongoing process. Stay calm and convey confidence to others. Remember, as the owner or as the leader, um, your demeanor or your... I mean, if you panic or if you lose your head, then everyone else probably lose their head. And remember, under leadership, we did touch on this. Inspire confidence in others, charisma, transformational leadership. Think about that. Gather clear and accurate facts about the crisis as soon as possible. Learn from the crisis. Prioritize people over property. Very important. Don't make things worse. Communicate clearly and quickly, but avoid knee-jerk reaction. Think things through. Right? Credible spokesperson. In this case, it could just be you. Never lie, say it like it is. Remember during crisis, if you lose your trust, you may never regain it. And you may never be able to convey that confidence or calmness to the staff, right? Make sure the crisis team has resources, don't lose touch. Right? Always remember during the crisis, everyone's under stress, right? Or maybe grieving. So always people aspect, right? then learn from the crisis and fix any underlying problem so that is in essence some of the rules or the basis of crisis management and that um, 
we, we um, those are some of the aspects that you know uh, improve the effectiveness of your crisis management plan you know as you develop and implement it and so this is the jury yeah. so that's crisis management right so what happens now when we now need to go back to where we were remember we spoke about the before now we're talking about the jury now what happens after so the business needs to resume to pre-crisis level right? again there must also be a plan right plan doesn't have to be you know a big voluminous um piece of paper but it must just be us understanding the need for us to have guidance on how we resume operations to try and get back to the pre-crisis level of operations right so that is what is termed business resumption right so it must have a business resumption plan to restore the business after the emergency or the crisis right brp business resumption plan does not contain continuity procedures used during the emergency right so what we're saying is it does not con contain crisis management procedures which we needed during the crisis, right? It focuses on preventative, right? It does not happen again after the, so that the business is able to continue or not continue or to resume its growth to period before and further, right? It has three main parts, backup resource arrangements, procedures, equipment list. What do we need? How do we, so what, what equipment, what do we need to resume operations, procedures? How are we going to do it? Hmm? Right, backup resources, should it happen again, the crisis? How are we going to ensure that it doesn't really affect us the way it did? Right, those are the three parts. Right? So you can take time to go through the detail of those three parts, but in, in um, We've, we've put that in the detail manual or, um, you know, as you come up with your resumption, just think of those as the core or the backbone of what is needed and then just come up with your uh, simple procedures with regards to, um, you know, how, how, what equipment do you need as you resume now that it's, it's, it's post COVID, for example, it's not yet gone, but at least um, the restrictions are being lifted or have been lifted. What are the resources that you need? What is the backup? Right. So that's business resumption. Right. So we've gone through the before, the after, and the jury. Right. So we're going to now touch um, just a bit on how climate change and BCM are linked. Um, you know, a lot of operations recently have been affected by climate change, both in Zimbabwe, abroad, climate change, serious global issue, um, especially for farming operations, um, rainfall patterns changing, erratic droughts, you know, lots of rain in some areas, um, the timing of the rain different to our cropping cycles, um, so how, how how does BCM in you know business continuity management you know does it help you know are there any any ways where we can actually mitigate like against climate change using business continuity? So that's what we're trying to to figure out, right? So a survey by Chartered Management Institute found that fifty four percent of business reported disruptions by severe weather in twenty twelve, right? making the, it the number one causes of business disruption in the fourth year run. So that just highlights the seriousness of severe weather climate change. More than half the businesses have been affected. So, you know, in your groups, if you've been dis, dis, affect, affected by climate change, what are the disruptions that your business has faced 
from climate change. Just discuss, right? So organizations need to be prepared. They need to be better prepared for severe weather, regardless of course, right? So how, how can you be prepared? What can we do? Can we even be prepared for climate change, right? So this involves making physical, operational, strategic changes and tackling the likelihood of disruptions. Okay, simple to say. Let's unpack, right? So we need to, to firstly, accept that there is climate change. Right? Again, we spoke of, you know, denial, right? So the first step, once we accept, then we need to adapt, right? So if it means we have to now, you know, adopt different farming styles, cultivation styles, change our cropping cycles, right? everything has to be reviewed in the context of the organization. Once we accept that there is climate change, it is affecting us, we will be forced to change how we operate. We'll be forced to adapt, right? That's what we're saying, right? And what does adapting involve, right? You need to review in the context of your organization, how is your organization being affected by climate change, right? There must be people, right? Developing leadership. So uh, you need to, to be seen, you need to, to guide the organization. You need to understand how climate change is affecting your organization. What are the options that you have out there? Right? Someone needs to take the initiative to actually go out there and look at the options that are there for their operations and ensure that these are implemented in the business continuity. So you'll have a climate change as a risk. It will be ranked high. And by understanding the impacts, you highlight what the impacts are, climate change. And you'll have the mitigations based on what you've checked out there that can help the organization. So that's how BCM can be incorporated to assisting with climate change. Or risk assessment incorporated to assisting with climate change. Embed that risk of climate change, its impact, and the mitigations within. Right. Okay. So within the organization, right, we accept climate change does present business continuity with new challenges, right, which sit outside the norm. Because remember, weather affects a business is more subtle, right, in more subtle ways, such as reduced efficiencies in processes. But for us, farmers, it's not subtle. It's very high, high impact, right? We are those sectors that are vulnerable to changes in climate, water supply. So you need to look at the options. Are there opportunities from climate change? Accessing growing market, adoption of resilient product. Do you need to change your products? Do you need to use more resilient seeds or crop types what is the research out there what are the options so a lot will depend on remember we spoke of taking ownership being a leader you need to go out there and identify what your options are the options are not generic we can we can sit here and say oh it's option one two three four five but they're not generic some people are in the vegetable crops, grains, livestock. So each business is affected separately. Could be irrigation, could be grazing. So you need to go out there and see what your options are, right? You need to assess and react to climate risks. And you need to keep pace with the mitigations that are in place or that are being developed. 
in this climate change. Right. So it may mean you actually adopt a different farming style. Right. So in your groups, right, as part of the case study or the homework, highlight some of the key challenges that your own sector is, is facing that are climate change related. And next to each one, highlight some of the new technologies or green farming methods that are there that are being developed to mitigate climate change. And then we can discuss this in the question and answer. Okay. All right. Okay. So the significance of climate change, as we've highlighted before, prompts us to develop our leadership. Right. Top management needs to be committed to adapting to climate change as a key mitigation against the risks that the organization faces associated with climate change. Right. This could be done through the suggested checklist. Right. So you need to highlight examples of how weather has affected you in the past and any associated costs. Right. This is now you understanding what the risk is and what its impact is. Right. Then you need to do a list of key drivers, external and internal, and the requirements of interested parties. Right. What are the external drivers of climate change? Are there any internal factors? Right. And then you need to highlight just an explanation of how adapting to climate change goes beyond normal business continuity management process. Right. This is for everyone to understand that climate change may not necessarily be covered by your normal standard business continuity. Right. But it goes beyond the norm. There's extra work that may be involved to ensure that your business continuity process actively includes aspects of climate change. Right? You also need to look at what others are doing in your sector. Right? So you might, we may put examples of the actions that other farmers, locally, regionally, internationally, are doing to mitigate against climate change. So that's where we meant that as a leader, you need to, to know what is being done or what, are, what is the latest that's being done by others with regards to climate change so that you can incorporate this in your own business continuity. Right? So that's what we mean there, then review and amend your business continuity. After you've obtained that information, you can then review to make sure that it is clear and it incorporates what you've learned. So once it's, it's there, those, that information, then it, you may require to assign some roles and responsibility to certain individuals, your farm manager, yourself, your staff, that will be responsible for actioning some of those actions like new farming methods, you know, new use of technology that is associated with reducing the impact of climate change on your operation. Right? And then understanding the key issues, right? Business impact analysis and risk assessment from the benefit of business continuity. So the key climate change issues need to be understand, understood by everyone in the organization. That is the only way that the associated mitigations can be effective. Right. 
So that's climate change and ensuring that you provide guidance and leadership to ensure that the aspects of climate change are adequately included in your business continuity, business impact, risk assessment, and the relevant mitigations, which may be new technologies or information that others are doing is adequately also included in the mitigation. So that's where we, we, we're trying to say that this may not be your comfort zone or standard business continuity or risk assessment. It takes, it requires you to do a little bit more by mere virtue of the nature of climate change. Okay, understanding, let's understand just the key issues. Climate change cons considerations can be factored into business impact analysis and risk assessments. That's what we've said, right? Once you've included them, you need to review and amend your business impact analysis, right? So the BIA focuses on the business impact of disruptions regardless of the source so that you do expect impact from severe weather to be included, right? Again, add climate change as part of your key business impact analysis. You are in farming. It is one of the critical areas that will affect your business and will have significant disruption. You need to understand the climate risk, <laughs> right? So again, risk assessment, climate change is a risk, right? Although there is uncertainty, it is happening, it is a risk, and it is affecting our business. Right? So the level of uncertainty is definitely much lower, it's so more certain, right? And then fourthly, uh, the concept of risk can be useful when making decisions in the face of uncertainty. Again, we've, we've, we've spoke of the dynamics of risk and the threats. Same thing with climate change. Identify the threats, come up with the mitigations based on what others are doing, what's out there in the market or in the industry. Right? Use of information for the future rather than the past. Right? So where is, where is climate change going? Right? Okay. Um, so that's it. That's the activity we, we can just quickly do, right? Okay, we'll, we'll just take maybe five minutes to go through the activity. Adaption options that you can use on your farm. This is all climate change. What strategies, right? What is out there? What are others doing? What works for you? All right, let's quickly do that. Okay, so that is all that we need to look at with regards to climate change. Um, we'll have a short question and answer because I we do see there were some questions. Um, before we touch base on the final exam. So in terms of the final exam, um, okay, so it, it will be online. Um, you can, it's based on what we've covered in the slides as well as what's in the detailed guideline that we've posted um, on the WhatsApp chat. So there's nothing to worry about. It's really manageable. Just read the questions carefully and prepare well. Manage your time. Enjoy a good connectivity. You should be fine. I think that's it from my side. Um, good luck with the exam. Thank you.